Last fall, when I cut up the oak tree with my friend Trent, he introduced me to his camera jib, jib crane, I guess it's called. It's a device that sits on top of a tripod and it allows you to hold the camera in more locations than just at the top of the tripod. It sort of lets you put the camera right where you want it. I thought this was a really nice idea and I thought it'd be something I could actually make and would allow me to put the camera in new and better locations in the shop as I do various projects. You can sort of see we, we got the camera kind of right over the saw as we were cutting. I came up with a design, at least a place to start. I thought at first I might use plywood, but I have all of this pine paneling that I got from some friends out of their basement that I've been using for various projects. <laughs> it's kind of nice having a supply of wood that you can just use for things and not really worry about its value. So I decided to make this out of this pine as it's really light and plenty strong for holding a camera. I can cut it on the CNC, but as it's got a little bit of a cup to it, I can joint one face to get it flat to sit on the CNC table. And I can start to cut out the parts that I had drawn. So the idea with a camera jib is that it holds the camera in the same position as you move the camera around in space. So it, it sort of points in the same direction as it moves up and down. And it does this with a parallelogram so that the mount that the camera is on stays at the same angle as the camera moves up and down. So I designed sort of a main arm and then a bunch of parts that make that parallelogram work. And I used two pieces of pine and then about another half a piece to get all the parts that I wanted to make. I tried some different methods for holding the pieces in place as they were cut. Some of them I just cut completely free and that worked for the smaller stuff. I think for the main arms I used bridges to hold the piece in place as it's being cut out of the, the main piece of wood. And then some of the pieces I didn't cut all the way through to the table and I can finish cutting on the bandsaw. Sort of the idea being that you only have to cut deep enough for a guide bearing on the router table and then you can flush trim the final bit by hand. So here I'm at the router table slash shaper and I'm trimming off the, the bridges that I used on these bigger pieces. Then for some of the smaller pieces, I could cut off the part that was left by the bandsaw. And there aren't that many pieces, so this went pretty quickly. I could start to see how pieces fit together. There's always a little bit of an issue in that you, you draw something up on the computer and then will it really go together? And this main bottom piece to the structure, I drew to exactly the length that it needed to be, which is, of course, ever so slightly too long and it won't fit. So I had to trim off just the, the tiniest little bit of the length so that it would fit into the space that I had cut out for it. I forgot one of the holes at the end of the main beam. I drilled that. I didn't cut out the top of the parallelogram. So it's sort of the rod that holds the camera at the same angle as it moves. And it needed holes that were the same distance apart as the holes I had made in the main beam for the structure. I clamped that piece that I just made to the piece that I cut out on the CNC machine and I could drill those holes in the same place. Did some more cleaning up of the pieces. Kind of sanded the, the fuzziness of the cut from the CNC machine. And I decided, based on the bolts that I had, that I wanted a slightly bigger bolt for the main pivot. So I made that hole a little bit bigger. 
I cut out the pieces, but there was then a lot of fiddling to get everything to really go together. Then I used screws to attach the parts as I wanted the option to be able to take things apart if I needed to. I was kind of coming up with this as I was going, so there were places where I would I would put things together and then have to take them apart, to reshape things, or get, get some next piece to, to fit correctly. <laughs> For instance, my camera mount piece that goes at the end was too wide. I completely miscalculated how wide the center of this piece was going to need to be. So it was a matter of cutting this piece down to the right width. And because I had a hole for the camera mount in the center, I couldn't just cut off the width. I had to cut off half the width from each side. That piece can go together. And again, I use screws to put this together. As you never know, I might have to take it apart and fix something. <laughs> so that goes on the end. I can work on the center post that the beam will pivot around. So this is the piece that attaches the entire structure to the tripod. I cut out the two sides of this piece on the CNC, but the rest of it, I didn't quite know what it was gonna be. So once I could kind of see what it was and how it was gonna need to work, I could make the rest of it. So the holes for the bolts I had in the right place, and that's really what was important. And from there, I could make the two pieces that I had cut out into a box. So I needed two side pieces, which I cut the angle in, and then a, a bottom piece to attach to the tripod. Those pieces would make a box that would sit in the center of the arm. So in the bottom of this piece, I can put an insert in. And luckily the inserts I have for my knobs are the quarter 20 thread that a camera tripod uses and is the standard threaded connection at the bottom of most cameras. So I can put that insert in and then that allows me to mount this piece of wood to the tripod. And I can then mount the rest of the jib to this piece of wood. <laughs> so I can put together the box or sort of the, the center post I've been working on. If I was gonna cut this out on the CNC again, I would modify my drawings a little bit as this is a little bit hacked together. <laughs> and I sanded it to be flush on the outside. And you can see how this piece goes in now. So it just sits sort of in the center of the main arm. The one little secret I learned from Trent was that you use nylon washers for all of the pivots and that will allow everything to move. You can tighten the bolts up to where they're snug, but they'll still allow the pivots to move. And it seems to work pretty well. And here's the top of the parallelogram going in. So you can see how that works. And I can put what I have so far on the tripod. So the center post is held rigid by the tripod, and as you move the arm up and down, the platform for the camera stays parallel. So it was working. What I wanted to do now is add some weights to the opposite end from the camera, and this will help balance the whole system. If it's balanced correctly, it shouldn't take any force to move the camera up and down. So I came up with a simple system where I can add and remove weights to kind of do big adjustments, and then I can move the weights in and out a little bit for finer adjustments and get it balanced exactly perfect. So this is a shot with it moving up and down and also rotating the camera, which makes for a nice shot. So the main function that I wanted the jib to do, which was to be able to hold the camera in specific locations, is finished. But what I thought would be nice is to put a motor on this so I could have it move on its own. So you can see here how I can now put the camera over the CNC table and show what's going on. <laughs> I wanted to make some mounts 
to hold this motor I want to attach to the tripod. So I made some clamps for the legs on the tripod, which is really just two pieces of wood with a circle about the size of the leg on the tripod and some screws to hold the two sides together. My first idea was to just put these on the legs and then cut whatever weird angle was going to need to be on these clamp pieces to hold the motor in place. But in looking at that, that wasn't really going to work. I mean, it would work, but it, it was going to be difficult. <laughs> so I started to cut out the gear that would attach to the jib and the smaller gear that would attach to the motor. I found a small insert that I could put into this gear and this would help hold this gear to the motor shaft. Just putting the threads into the wood seemed to be fine. So I can attach a big gear to the arm of the jib. The center of this gear is the pivot on the arm so that the, the teeth are always at the same distance from the motor gear. I took my little clamps off and decided a much easier way to do this would be to put these on the vertical post in the center of the tripod. So I had to make the holes for the post slightly bigger and I had to figure out how long my clamps were gonna be. I cut these big figuring I would cut them down once I could kind of see what they needed to be. But with them in the center post, I could just cut a straight line and sort of a straight length on these, and they didn't have to be some weird compound angle. With the screws tightened up, these hold really well. I made a mounting plate for the motor. And this is a hole for the shaft of the motor to go through this plate. And some holes to attach this plate to the brackets that attach to the tripod. And I can attach the motor with some screws. And I can put the gear on the motor. This is the little insert that I drilled a hole for earlier. I have a speed control dial and I decided I really should mount that to this plate, not just have it dangling on the wires. You can see how this plate now attaches to those clamps that I made. And this should hold the motor in the right location to turn the gear on the arm. <laughs> it worked great, but it moved it much too fast, as I really wanted this for doing time-lapse sequences as I can't really turn it on and then run over and do the thing that I'm going to do in front of the camera before it's moved too much <laughs> when I'm working by myself. So what I wanted to make was a gearbox to slow the movement of the arm down considerably. <laughs> So I made two big gears and two little gears. And I cut out a box to hold these gears within. Where I attached the little gear to the motor, I used a insert. Whereas these gears are gonna be attached to wooden axles. So I wanted a, a wood screw. Then I cut some side pieces for my gearbox and I cut some rabbits into the sides of those pieces that will receive the pieces that I cut out on a CNC machine. I have some nice finished dowels that I can use for the axles. And now I can put everything together. I can put a little gear on the axle. To attach the bigger gears, I used a pocket screw which was a little bit tricky as that I had half inch plywood into a small axle. So I needed to have the pocket hole hole in a very precise location. And I used a smaller screw than what you can get for pocket screws. So it's just a little wood screw. I just need to keep the gears from rotating on the axle. And I cut my side pieces to length and the box went together easily. 
and the gears fit. <laughs> and again, I use screws to hold everything together. As in just a few minutes, I'm going to be taking this apart because I can't put it on the tripod the way it is. <laughs> and I can attach the motor. So I made a little slot and sort of a tab on the box to hold the motor. And then I realized I couldn't get to where I needed to put screws from this box into the clamp pieces I have on the tripod. So I had to take this apart as little as possible and attach the back panel to the tripod. I used my earlier piece to locate the screws. And I can attach this piece to the tripod. I kind of wish I had a simpler way to take this on and off. Might be something that I want to be able to take on and off easily. So I can mesh the big gear with the little gear by raising the tripod up and down. It's kind of the, the simplest sort of brute force method. And it seems to work. It's still even a little bit fast. Like it would be nice to be able to have almost like a gearbox where I could have sort of first gear, second gear, third gear kind of thing. About the slowest I can have it go up is maybe five to ten minutes. It would be nice to have something that could do like half an hour to an hour. So I sort of ran a test where I was cleaning up my mess, having the camera rise and do a time lapse. But it seems to work. I, I could kind of see the gearbox not being on there all the time and using it more just as a tripod assist. <laughs> Thanks for watching.